DNA it's like, yeah, Trish- bomb. It's so. It's. Yeah, they, it's. They don't really explain how it works. It, if it kills everything with DNA or. I like. I don't even understand how that would begin to even work. Like that's. In a world where none of the science makes any sense and wheels are living and sentient and wrathful, that is the thing that bothers me the most. <laughs> the concept of a DNA bomb. Yeah, it's it's best not to think about it too much, really. How is any war, like, still happening with the advent of the DNA bomb? <laughs> well, maybe there aren't a, maybe there, there aren't a lot of them. Maybe. I mean, the Ulysses was like the flagship of the Confederate fleet or whatever. Maybe it's only, they only got a few. And like you said, apparently it'll kill life but leave the buildings and such intact. So does that include, like, vegetation? Uh, yeah, it's everything, I believe. So Well, actually, you'll, um... You'll get to find out. That confuses me because, like, there are certain buildings that have partially, yeah, they made like with wood or whatever. That might you wonder. Yeah. Although in that case, I think it's just, it's just like the cellulose of the, uh, you know, cell walls that I don't think you really need the DNA. Although strictly speaking, if you destroyed the DNA in all living things, like the bodies wouldn't be destroyed; they just stop working because their metabolism wouldn't function anymore. Right. It'd be pretty gross, actually. But I mean... Well... I'm sorry, but... Oh, I was just gonna say, like, that wouldn't help with cleanup, like, at all. Yeah, I know, you've got all these, like, a bunch of dead corpses lying around. And not only that, but presumably the DNA bomb, since it would kill all bacteria and such as well, they wouldn't even decompose properly. You know? Yeah. It'd be like... Since a lot of, deco- a lot of decomposition is a... As long as you keep something solid between oh, right. you and that cosmic flurry, you'll be safe and sound. Okay, yeah, this... This is our sort of mechanic here. We don't want to get out in the open. In the, uh... The, ga- the gamma radiation lightning, I guess. Well, it could turn us into the Hulk, though. Or, or one of those burnouts. Right. More likely. Did he say sushi dick? Yes, he did. That's the weirdest racist thing I've ever heard. The, the... The general is... Kind of, sort of, incredibly racist. Well, no, like, like I get that, but like... That's just... It, it, it's weird. Yeah. The weirdest one. Well, it's like, well, there's so much, so much of, like, just the way people talk in this universe revolves around dicks, you know, I mean... What you know, sort speaking of, weird of dick culture? Speaking of dick, what the dick? Speaking of dick killing parties, I mean, it's, like, something in human history must have just ingrained that deeply on our species psyche. Yeah, you have to imagine some big event happened. Like, okay, you know the theory that all Quentin the 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 dick wars of the twenty seventh century. Right, like you know the theory that all Quentin Tarantino movies exist in the same universe. I think I have heard that. And, and like. It revol- it's based on the fact that, uh, uh, what happened? Uh, Inglorious Bastards is where it starts because, uh, the, the, the thing that ends World War II was hyperviolence. Oh! And so, oh, nice. They got me! Speaking of hyperviolence. I'm sorry, you were saying? And so hyperviolence is what, like, the norm for the Tarantino, Tarantino, whatever, universe. So, like, maybe something happened with dicks. Like, maybe Hitler died from dicks or something. <laughs> it's, it's an alternate universe where... Yes, it's it's an alternate universe where history... Oh, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> Hitler was just dicks left. It, it's just death. a more dick-centric timeline, basically. That's Dick-centric timeline is the name of the episode, by the way. Awesome. I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure. Uh-oh. Oh! No, well, that didn't take Damn, long. Damn, they went right for you. Are you. Or I went right for his stream of bullets. Are you slipping through the ground? He ki- That's how hard he killed me. The 
but yeah, don't. Now I'm imagining like this, like like this, doing this multi-part series of videos, the science of Bullet Storm. <laughs> the history of Bullet Storm. The Bullet Stormiverse. Diana. Did he? Call oh, he's calling you a girl. All right, but that was that was pretty tame. That's Doctor Cox level insults. Well, you know he's 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 got a he's you know he's warming up. I suppose. He can't be going at he can't be going at full blast all the time or it loses its impact. You have to alternate. Otherwise, it's not special. Exactly. Can't be Christmas every day. Can't be WrestleMania week every week. Got him. Nice. Yeah, you gotta break it up with, you know, in your house or whatever the hell. Do they still have that? No, they do not. Okay. That was like the first of the, like, non-Big Four pay-per-views, as I can be called. Well, they had a bunch of mini B pay-per-views. I think, I think you're right, though. In Your House might have been one of the Attitude Era B pay-per-views. I think the first B pay-per-view was this Tuesday in Texas. Oh, okay. That classic. Yeah. Oh, and out of juice. Or just about. It's the one nobody remembers because Hulk Hogan jobbed. <laughs> and then in his memoirs, he says Undertaker broke his neck. Because Undertaker... Oh. Yeah, he, he says... Uh, in because uh, this Tuesday in Texas he gets tombstoned onto a steel chair and that's how. Uh... Okay, see that's what happens when you go into that gamma ray storm there. Nice. Now you may be wondering why is this resort on a planet where this happens? And I've asked you'll... this. It it does get explained. The short version is very poor development planning. Like, what sort of, like, what sort of planet are they on that that environment requires a giant radiation storm? Like, how is that naturally occurring? I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's, it's one of those, like, it's one of those, like, weird, like, Different radiation storms they would have, like, every other episode of Star Trek to explain why they can't use the transporter. Yeah. Or why the transportation accidentally somehow created a duplicate of, you know, Commander Riker, or sent Kirk into an alternate universe. I should go back. It's one of those things. And watch old uh -oh. Star Trek. Legitimately, I actually watched an episode of Star Trek, and I did not know what I was watching. Because it, really? it was one where, like... This woman was just going around on the ship talking to her friends about stuff that was going on. And she attended an aerobics oh. class. And I was like, what the fuck am I watching? Was this the original series or Next Generation? I think it was Next Generation. I only found out it was Star Trek because at some point she put on her uniform. I'm like, what the f When did this happen? I'm in a bit of a pickle here. Is that like a clockwork soldier? Well, he's a new type. It's a new weapon type. It looks like a robot. We're gonna get our hands on it. Oh! You see that? It's stuck in me! Ow! Ugh. Oh, is it like the cerebral the... bore? It's the drill gun. Nice. What's the cerebral bore? Is that a painkiller weapon? Um... Is it? I have to look up... I don't need to know right away. No, I don't. All right, yeah, here we I go. want to look at a... You're gonna miss out on the dr you're gonna miss out on the hot drilling action. I, that came out wrong. I am gonna see it. Oh, it's a Turok weapon. People can fly work on Turok. Did they? Did they? I, that, that's what I'm wondering. Good old Turok, the dinosaur hunting game. I was gonna say the the first person shooter set in Silent Hill. At least the original, the, the, the draw distance was so incredibly bad. <laughs> it also had a lot of horrible first-person platforming. I don't know, maybe the series improved. I can't remember it ever improving. Ooh. 
Oh yeah, I um the drill. It some guys some guys flying. Interesting. So I hit that. So I hit that. Oh, and it can go through multiple dudes. Shish kebab. Yeah, I get hit hit one guy and it keeps going. And like it hits a guy and like it, it it embeds itself in him and he goes flying back. So you can like throw guys like into other hazards and get better skill shots. Like with that first shot, I hit a guy and it sent him into the radiation storm. Hmm. She took that like a champ, I have to say. <laughs> Ow. Okay. Yeah, the drill is maybe my favorite weapon in the game, actually. Because yeah. it's generally, a, it's like a one-shot, you can one-shot kill most enemies with it. And... The fact that it propels guys so effectively means you can do a lot of cool skill shots with it. Nick? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Damn. Jesus, sir. And he didn't. Damn. Well, the AI won't let the you know the AI won't let him. Probably. Yeah, Sor Sorano was a class act all the way. Yeah, it's very... Oh. Ow. Do you even have a glove on that hand? <laughs> Gray's forearms at this point should just be, like, flensed of all, all biological matter, basically. <laughs> they should just be, like, a pair of, like, bloody empty sleeves. I was also going to notice that both uh, Ishii and the oh, fucking Serrano got General down Serrano. there before you finished sliding on the thing. <laughs> I love being able to use the leash and just drag a guy straight into a hazard. Whether it's the Cactus or the Incredible Hulk Storm or... <laughs> the Hulk Storm. <laughs> What you gonna do when it runs wild on you, brother? On your genetic material. 